All right, gang, math uh, 5,500. Uh, just, just a few things I've written out. Uh, just, just pump the brakes a little bit and uh, revisit just a few basic uh, results for matrices. So, uh, you know, take a look at these. Uh, we used some of this in one of the previous proofs. And um, so uh, just, just want to... Uh, uh, take a look at these four because we're, we're going to need those coming up. Uh, the proof of these things is relatively straightforward. I'm not going to complete the proof, but I'm going to get it going for you. If we look at um, to prove that the um, transpose of the product uh, AB is the same thing as B transpose times uh, A transpose, all we have to do is re really just take a strong arm approach to the proof. Um, uh, take a look at A and B, and then uh, A transpose and B transpose are, are, are clear. Uh, just, just switch the rows and columns. So if I look at uh, the product of AB, and then if I look at the transpose of that, which again is just switching the rows and columns, uh, and then compare to uh, the beta transpose, A transpose, I see that I get the same thing. So you know, I encourage you to f uh, complete that, but uh, I'm not going to waste... Uh, uh, instructional time for that at a graduate level. I think that's something that uh, we should be able to handle. Now we're going to move into uh, so, some more types of matrices. One that one matri matrix we're going to run into is very very helpful is a variance covariance structure, and we're going to look at variance covariance for errors and and betas and and and. Um, uh, and diff different things. Uh, I think I can think of uh, about four we're going to take a look at. But just in general, if, I, if I'm looking at, um, you know, to set the stage for these, if I'm looking at the variance covariance for Y1, Y2, and Y3, uh, I end up getting a matrix. And what I get on the diagonals is I get the variance uh, of our Y sub I's, Y1's in this case, and our Y2's. And uh, on the off diagonal, I get the covariance. <clears throat> now, gang, remember, covariance is just uh, uh, very similar to correlation, except with correlation, uh, we get the variable standardized, and with covariance, we don't. So, uh, you, you know, with, for, for example, uh, with, with correlation, uh, we know that uh, our R value uh, is going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, there's no limitation on covariance. It does. It's not going to be between negative one and positive one in general. Uh, one interesting property is that the covariance, uh, so the order doesn't ma matter, so the co covariance of y sub i, y sub j is the same thing as the covariance for y sub j, y sub i, when i is not equal to j. So what we end up getting is we get this you know, upper diagonal, or the elements above the diagonal and below the diagonal uh, are gonna be the same. So uh, want to, uh, Took, uh, let's see, it seemed like there's something else I wanted to add here. Uh, anyway, we, we have some, we're, we're going to expand on this, but we have some more work to do before uh, we get into variance covariance structure. So the purpose of the next few minutes is just to expand our toolbox, if you will, of matrices for simple linear regression. And again, all this stuff is going to be able to uh, be expanded and generalized to the multiple regression. Uh, 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 types of problems, types of uh, uh, regression problems. All right, so I'm a little distracted here, trying to trying to get a game plan for what I want to do. Let's let, let, let's start out with um, a matrices. A, a matrix turns out to be a column vector for our fitted values. And that seems about uh, as, as, as reasonable place to begin uh, in developing our toolbox uh, as, as any. Uh, we know, or I certainly hope you know by now, <laughs> is that we find the uh, uh, predicted values by uh, uh, putting the uh, uh, x values into our model. In matrix form, uh, we, we calculate the predicted va values by taking the, our design matrix times our, our beta ve vector. Now, on the left, uh, this is going to uh, turn out to be an n by 1. Uh, of course, at this stage, uh, our design matrix is an n by 2. And 
we know that our beta matrix, and again, we're, we're focusing on simple and regression uh, to predictors. This, this is, you know, again, going to be expanded later on. So, um, so we see that um, uh, what's important from this is that our fitted values will be a column vector uh, of length n. Now, um, so, you know, again, that's, that's going to be, uh, you know, super easy uh, to find. Now, let's get into something that's uh, extremely helpful. So, again, we have uh, x times uh, uh, beta. So, again, our predicted values uh, is a product of our design matrix and our uh, beta. But we know from previous uh, lectures that this right-hand side can be rewritten like this. <clears throat> and what I want you to focus on right now is I just want you to focus on this particular part. This particular part right here is referred to as our hat matrix. So, ladies and gentlemen, our hat matrix is equal to x, x transpose x, so we take the inverse of that, times x transpose. Now, super important matrix for us, all right? One of the most important matrices that we're going to run into because... Uh, uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, we can see that, uh, you know, that, that y hat can be rewritten as our hat matrix times y. So for this reason, we call, sometimes we call the hat matrix a project, projection matrix. I haven't had my second cup of coffee yet, guys, so uh, forming words is difficult. So anyway, but it's our, our projection matrix because what it does is it projects our observed y's onto the predicted y's. Um, the second thing I want to say about uh, uh, the hat matrix is it's uh, often used as a diagnostic. Told you. Yeah. Pops up all the time uh, in matrix operations uh, when uh, we're, we're performing uh, uh, higher level diagnostics, which uh, you'll see, uh, I think you see more of that in Math 6500, but we touch on it a little bit in 5500. Now, a couple of properties uh, for, uh, for H. Uh, number one, H will be uh, symmetric. And number two, um, what is number two? I should write this stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, H is idempotent. Uh, now, what idempotent means is uh, that if we take a matrix uh, times itself, uh, we just get uh, the matrix H. The proof of this is very easy. Um, so we can see that uh, H times H would be uh, X x transpose x inverse uh, x transpose and then uh, x x transpose x inverse x transpose and if we just look at uh, this part right here and rewrite I really don't even need to rewrite it We can see here that we would get the identity matrix. Which would just be, can you guys see that? Yeah. Sometimes I get so focused on uh, writing that I'm not paying attention to my screen. <clears throat> and um, I get, uh, <laughs> you know, I end up writing over here, and it just is goofy. Okay, um, 
So, um, moving ahead again, this hat matrix, uh, man, we're gonna we're gonna wear it out. Now, we'll tell you one thing about the hat matrix. Again, it's, it's symmetric n by n. So if you in, in, end up um, with, with a large sample size, you know, an n by n. For example, there's going to be a uh, there was a data set that I gave on a final exam for this very class that had like a thousand and uh, I don't remember a thousand some cases. In other words, I wanted the data set to be so large that um, uh, that they had to use, uh, the students had to use matrices. Well, what happened is the uh, R crashed. It wouldn't run the hat matrix, matrix calculations because it was like a, you know, 1,200 by 1,200 matrix. So uh, kind of strange. There's probably a workaround for that, but I haven't found it yet. So, you know, in illustrating these and uh, on exams, we'll keep the... Uh, the number of cases are relatively small. All right, enough of that. So next thing we want to look at is we want to look at our errors. And I would certainly hope by now we know that we calculate an error by taking the observed minus the pre predicted. And uh, that we know that, uh, again, from just this, this video, that our predicted values can be calculated by taking the design matrix times the beta matrix. Now, let's get into the variance, covariance structure uh, of our residuals. Or our errors. So, uh, we can calculate our errors uh, again by uh, e sub i is our observed minus our predicted, which we now know is our y minus our uh, h sub y, or I'm sorry, y minus our hat matrix times y. Just a little bit of... Uh, Simple algebra says that we can calculate our errors uh, by uh, uh, just uh, the the identity matrix minus h times uh, our, our y vector. Uh, so um, the variance covariance. Uh, what, well, okay, let, let, let's get the card in front of the horse. I should write this stuff down. The variance of our errors, therefore. Uh, is going to be the, uh, the the variance times i minus h, and this is going to be estimated by. This is one of those times uh, in in class where I would pause and say, okay, let's put everything together. What do we think we're going to estimate this by? Well, it should be pretty clear that we're going to estimate the variance by the mean square error times i minus h. So if we want the variance covariance structure, variance covariance matrix of our errors, uh, we would need to find uh, three things. We need to find our hat matrix, uh, need to find uh, the identity matrix, and multiply by the mean square error, which is just a constant. Now the proof of this, um, a well-known uh, or at least an often uh, used property is that we often run into a uh, a vector w, which is the product of um, multiplying uh, a constant matrix and some random vector. So it's really important that in moving forward that we know that this. So again, we, we, we end up with this W that is often created by the product of two matrices with this A being a constant and the other being a random uh, vector. A uh, couple of interesting things here. The expected value uh, of A is just A. Makes sense. It's constant. Uh, the expected value of W can be found. Again, W is just... Um, uh, a, a times uh, y, 
Again, y, uh, I'm sorry, a is a constant, so it should make sense that uh, the expected value for w would just be a times the expected value for y. And something that's not intuitively clear, but very, very helpful, is that the variance of w, which is the variance of uh, a times y, can be found by taking a times the variance of our uh, the random vector times a transpose. All right, Flash, flashing neon lights around that one because that's going to um, uh, play an important role in this proof. Let me start a new sheet of paper. So. Uh, the errors, which can be calculated as the identity matrix minus the hat matrix times y, uh, can will have uh, variance. Now again, let, let, let's let's let me, let me make this clear. From the previous page, we'll think of this as uh, a times y. So this is, uh, can be thought of as our, our w. So we can see that this uh, would be um, well, i minus h. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, i minus h um, variance of our y's times I minus H transpose. This would lead into, uh, again, a variance covariance matrix where we're going to have our variances on the diagonal. But in this case, the off uh, diagonals will just be equal to zero. And this, of course, is just sigma squared times H. Now, we know that the, from a previous video, that the variances, the variance of y's, our y's is equal to the variance of our errors. So the variance of our errors will be equal to i minus h, as we did up here. Um, using this. I minus H transpose. Um, again, we have a constant. Which leads us to since uh, I minus H is idempotent. We know, therefore, that the variance of our E's, our errors, is just the mean, well, sigma squared times I minus H. And again, it's approximated by mean square error times the identity matrix uh, minus H. Now, um, so, in, in finding this, uh, you know, what do we need? Well, we need three parts. We need the mean square error, we need the identity matrix, and we need the hat matrix. So, uh, let's um, move over to R. And uh, let, me get, uh, let me get organized here. And what I've done, uh, just to speed up the process a little bit, uh, and, you, know, you can pump the brakes and, um, you know, get caught up with me uh, if you want. So what I've done, at uh, this data set that we've used ad nauseum uh, called body fat, uh, I've, I've gone ahead and uh, created the response vector, our y, 
uh, I created the design matrix. Uh, where are we here? The design matrix. Uh, again, this is all demonstrated previously. So I've calculated our uh, beta. Now, what I'd like to do now, and again, just, uh, you know, our length here is 20. So we have uh, 20 cases. So our hat matrix uh, is going to be uh, a 20 by 20. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, create the hat matrix. So uh, it is X. Uh, times the uh, inverse of the product of the transpose of X. Times uh, transpose of X, right? Make sure I have all my print or my uh, percentage signs and decimals right, yeah, or my uh, multiplication and percentage signs correct. All right, so I really don't want to. Yeah, let's just take a look at it. You can see that the uh, uh, the hat matrix uh, is uh, a twenty by twenty matrix uh, as we expected. So it's a it is symmetric. Now. The next thing I would want to do is um, to find the uh, uh, the variance covariance structure of our errors. Is to uh, I need to be able to create the, the identity matrix, so that's going to be super easy to create. So I just use uh, diagonal, and I need a twenty by twenty, so I can create a, a identity matrix uh, using uh, diag of twenty. And then I need to calculate my mean square error. Well, uh, I'm going to um, calculate this uh, uh, cheat a little bit. What are we predicting from triceps? Yeah. And do uh, I run my uh, ANOVA of the model, and I see that my mean square error, as I've seen before, is 7.95. So I just like to have that uh, saved as MSC. So the uh, variance uh, of my errors will be the uh, mean square error times the identity matrix minus the hat matrix. So what am I most interested in? Again, this is the variance covariance. So if I look at uh, the diagonal, uh, the variance of the first error is 6.99. The variance of the second error is uh, 7.54. These values here uh, are the covariance. So this would be the covariance between er error 1 and error 2. Uh, this, of course, is the covariance between uh, error 1 and error 3 and so on. But again, the diagonals are what we care most about here. Um, and these, uh, for example, this, this would be the variance of the errors for the fifth case. Now, you know, what I look at here is I want the uh, variances to be pretty similar, and, uh, and we get into some diagnostic measures on that in, uh, I think it's 6,500. I'm pretty sure it's 6,500. So uh, that's all I got here. Uh, we're going to expand this variance covariance structure into looking at uh, Variance covariance for our uh, beta zeros and beta ones. Uh, we'll look at uh, we'll look at some other stuff as well. So, uh, take care.